Alright guys, so I've managed to calm my great grandmother down a bit so I can record this now. It's a bit more quiet in my in my environment. Um, I've got the data prepped here. This is everything you really have to know. The GPU's condition in the testing Windows version was the well, the one previous than this one, so um, it is 30 October. I'm not sure what the latest one's version was, but I used the Windows prior. I didn't update during testing, um, so we didn't use the news Windows, uh, which wouldn't really matter too much, but just so you know, that's that. NVIDIA drivers over here. It's a very good driver. I did use the latest one, so driver. The res and the settings, I did elaborate in the previous video, but I said that, well, in the one testing video I elaborated, I said that I don't personally believe that 720p makes sense. There are currently almost no well-priced, in terms of value for money, 720p consumer screen options. Uh, 1080p is currently bog standard everywhere. I'm talking schools, I'm talking university, I'm talking everywhere. Um, cheap as chips. And you can pick up 1080p up to 360 hertz, right? Up to 500 even soon. And it is probably the most abundant screen res on earth at the moment. If I had to take a wild guess, I would say 1080p is the, the most abundant res because um, you see it in some TVs, you see it in cell phones, you see it in laptop screens uh, all over the place. You see it in uh, monitor screens everywhere, schools, universities, um, cheap screens for home use, everything. So 1080p is the lowest res we're testing. We're not testing 720p. Um, plus 720p has no high refresh rate screen so realistically speaking you can imagine that there's no real logic behind testing 720p this is, you're never going to use it it's, it's impossible to use you, you're never going to go pick up a 720p screen and run 60 hertz with 390 and uh one of these chips it, it would make uh, absolutely no sense no, no logical sense so 1080p is it right fsr did not use uh i don't see much benefit with fsr with the video cards it was fes so and when you kind of drop down the FSR quality to see actual FPS improvements that I... Because I haven't seen much improvements with, with ultra quality. So um, you'd have to use something like quality or performance. And by that point, the image quality just degrades far too badly. So I just avoid FSR. That's a biased opinion, but I did use FSR. XESS, I did not use either. In fact, I don't think it was inside any of the games tested. CAS, we didn't use either just to avoid uh, conflicts within a video card. Because I think CAS doesn't require much processing on amd cards it does on the video card to a degree i just turned cast off uh, that's you know it is what it is dls i did use because i just genuinely believe that quality um setting is actually superior to native i, I think quality not balance and not performance but quality mode is so good by this point with the latest dlss2 uh dll that you can download on uh take uh take power up i believe that with the latest DLL, copy it into your game files. DLS is 2.0. It's so good, so freaking good, that quality versus native, you could make an argument quality looks better than native. Because native requires an AA method, anti-aliasing, right? Quality does not. DLSS does not require anti-aliasing. In fact, you can't use anti-aliasing alongside DLSS. Meaning, DLSS quality ups the frame rate, gets rid of your aliasing, so your, your jaggies, so to speak, and... It makes the, the image look clearer and more visually, I guess you could say, appealing. And for literally a benefit in frame rate. Not a massive boost, obviously, but a decent uplift in frame rate. So, in my opinion, DLSS quality, if it's there, use it. Because there's no point not using it. And in COD, for example, where a lot of the complaints come from, from the competitive community, Warzone, Vanguard, Cold War, well not Cold War, but Vanguard, Warzone, this game, uh, Modern Warfare 2, sorry, I'm, I'm referring to. Um, so Modern Warfare 2, Warzone, Vanguard, uh, they all, to my knowledge, have DLSS sharpening sliders. I don't recall if Cold War did, I think Cold War did have one. But yeah, if you can, you can literally sharpen the DLSS up to maximum, and it makes it look far clearer. So I honestly don't see a benefit in DLSS... Uh, omission in testing. I just don't see why you would do it. Like, why Why would you not use the LSS? I, I, I don't know. Um, I mean, there's always an argument, but that's just how I look at it. So, games that DLSS, obviously, you could imagine were Legion. Um, Valhalla did not. Valhalla has FSR. We did not use it. Uh, so, Legion had DLSS. Uh, not Valhalla, not Far Cry. Shadow did. Not Forza. Not Breakpoint. Not Wildlands. So, just Legion and just uh, Shadow. Tomb Raider. I had DLSS. Um, 
I did not load the latest DLSS, uh, you know, uh, DLL into Shadow. In fact, I actually believe with Shadow, you can't use 2.0 because Shadow was not a 2.0 game. Shadow was a DLSS 1.0 game, meaning you can only load DLSS 1.0 DLLs into Shadow and run the game. So even if you wanted to, you couldn't. But yeah, so Legion I did, obviously, because it supports 2.0. And yeah, but uh, that's about it for that bit of it. Um, now let's just discuss the results because you're seeing it in front of you. So I'm going to zoom in real quick to give you a better, a better, like a better kind of image. Um, so here we go. And obviously I9 means uh, 1200k and I7 means 1300k. So R23, you're noticing a about 10% improvement. Um, I think, is it 10%? It might be. Let me check for you. So obviously R23 is just core for core, so there's no way the E's will ever win. So kind of ignore these numbers, but look at them if you want to have um, just some like background, some interest for interest sake, you could say. Um, you know, if you're curious, this is what they look like without equals on. Um, and if you divide that score, it's 29258. So 10% in R23. And uh, for Geekbench, it is 92053 divided by 85. 683 and that is seven around seven and a half percent more or less um so yeah the i7 raptor lakes ims because i mean this is beneficial because it's 16 cores versus 16 cores right and then it's imc capability versus imc capability on average and let me just tell you this did not take a long time to stabilize this took like three hours to set and testing took like you know the rest of the time, but like maybe two hours to test. But yeah, it took like three hours to find these values. Maybe maybe two and a half hours even. So this is not an unrealistic tune. This is very very reasonable. Um, actually, this took longer. This this took longer to set than this did. So yeah, I, I definitely think Raptor has a better IMC on average, just better reliability with memory. Um, not you know leagues and bounds, but just you know. It's a nice quality of life improvement on Raptor Lake with IMC quality. Um, and that's that's that. I mean, I elaborated on, on, on this topic on my other videos. So, yeah. Anyway. So, not not huge. And what this means is, generally speaking, this is just a very slight IPC improvement. And you could even say that the memory memory speed, right? Because, I mean, I didn't test it. Um, I don't believe in stock testing, same like frame testers, because I just believe, like, if you can max out the platform... What does it actually do? Because if this thing can do 7,200, why would you not? Like, you know what I mean? Like, why would you do 7,000 for the sake of testing? Like, oh, just because apples to apples. What does it matter? Like, the entire platform that you buy is a package in its in its whole. Like, the CPU is an entire package containing the uncore, containing the cores, containing everything. So why would you why would you choose to limit a certain part of the testing just because you want to, you know, test whatever architecture? It's like... The entire CPU is what you're buying, so test the entire CPU, right? Um, that's just kind of how I look at it. And, yeah, you know, so Raptor Lake, you know, generally speaking, in, in, in synthetic tasks like Geekbench, which, I mean, I don't know exactly what I would translate to, but 7.5% for something like Geekbench, right? And uh, if you want to get an idea of E-Cores disabled, um, so the E-Cores, so the P-Cores themselves, alongside um, the faster memory, and uh, irrespective of ring, right? Or well, I mean, yeah, cause the ring doesn't change in these two. But yeah, so if I divide that by six two seven eight three, you see that it's actually less of a difference. Funny enough, um, with ease disabled on the twelve hundred k, it's kind of weird. Uh, why would that be? I don't know. Probably like maybe yeah, maybe, maybe the Raptor Lake equals actually are faster. Like I guess they are. They are faster because the L two increases. So yeah, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, so the Raptor Lake equals are also faster than the older Lake equals, and um, you've been staring at this this uh, Excel for the last how many minutes now, and you could probably by this point uh, realize that these equal results are all faster than the, the non the non equal results, right? So equals and Raptor Lake are objectively faster. They just never lose. Um, never lose. Why? Probably because the ring has not increased on the equals disabled side like they did here and the ring increasing in this in this testing for the 1200k um meant that you were seeing this benefit in forza and in shadow 
um, and even I guess in Wildlands a little bit. Uh, and then the equals being off was what made for uh, Far Cry run quite a bit slower and Legion a little bit. And same thing here when you look at the ease off results here. You can see Far Cry still exhibiting a fairly significant frame, frame drop, almost like 20 frames you're losing. And uh, you're with Legion like, you know, solid 6 frames. I mean, not massive, but it's still it's still there. Um, with Shadow and with Forza, now you're observing frame losses with equals uh, disabled. Which is interesting because um, a lot of people are on the fence of, or on the side of equals disabled is better for gaming. I, I beg to differ now. But... To answer my question that I posed in that video where I, that I made where I was confused about the gaming results, well, here they are. So what are the actual differences, guys? Um, if you will look at real gaming numbers, and this is not realistic gaming numbers because obviously we're not going to be running games at 1080p low. On this kind of setup, you're running 1440p at least high. Not ultra, maybe, but high for sure. So this wouldn't even be as big a difference, but the real-world gaming numbers look like this. So if you want to be fair... Because if you want to be sensible in this, you would take the highest i7 score and divide that by the highest i9 score. So you wouldn't take 342 divided by 318. You would do 328 because you can get that performance back by disabling equals on the i9 side. So even still, let's so let's say best case scenario on Shadow, you're talking 342 divided by 328 is 4%. Now, if you had the ease enabled, and let's say you weren't in the mood to test the equals off and you wanted to run equals enabled all the time your difference in shadow would have been 342 divided by 318 which is 7.5 percent so a little bit higher than the four percent so yeah but still 7.5 massive not at all in fact it makes some of the numbers i've seen online just utterly weird um forza horizon 5 this is actually a big one because in actual gaming I noticed a 50 FPS increase in my normal, like, day-to-day -day gaming. Because when I turned the settings to high, I was able to get back a lot of performance, plus the NVIDIA driver benefits. I was seeing increases from, like, 120 with high settings and the NVIDIA driver up to, like, 190. So I was really happy. With Raptor Lake, I'm seeing, like, 240, 250. That's insane. And you, so this you do see. You actually do see this. Um, this massive uplift in performance. So 348 divided by... Uh, 307. Now, arguably, you could say I was not running optimally in this game because I could have enabled equals. Sure. But I had them enabled and, you know, frames increased substantially when I actually ran around, like, or drove around in the game uh, just now. It fought in 40p high. So, this is not just a fluke kind of uplift you see. You do see this in real in real gaming. So, you will notice Raptor Lake winning in Forza by a margin, a decent margin, to where you can actually appreciate that you bought something new and upgraded. Um, so 348 divided by 307 is 13%. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Um, it's not massive, but 13% is there. It's it's actually um, appreciable margin. Now you could say, okay, well, show us what happens if you ran equals disabled. Well, so Raptor Lake's best result versus all the Lake's best result came to this, which is probably about you know, 6%. So yeah, not, not a massive increase at all. Like about 6% uh, if you turn the equals off uh, on your 1200k and claw back the ring frequency and, and ended up getting... You know, you ended up getting this kind of result. Now, what you could say is that the fact that Raptor Lake has high ring frequency with equals enabled is what makes it so good, right? Plus the fact that the P cores can now access everything. And it doesn't have to really share, so to speak, the cache. It's kind of like it can access all the cache. I think that's how it works. But yeah, so you can notice that now it seems like there's a different interaction between equals and P cores. It seems like this whole system is now kind of changed. Um... And now look at our not so interesting numbers. So, uh, equals enabled on Wildlands 282 divided by 270 equals enabled on 1200k, and you get a whopping 4%. That's nothing. Um, again, it's I mean it's there, but it's it's very minimal. And you can see even between uh, equals on and off, it's almost a margin of error. It's pretty much nothing, right? It's it's 272 divided by 270. It's it's almost like what is it? Like one percent? Not even. It's less than 1%, guys. Look at this. It's it's nothing. It's it's literally nothing. Um, look at this. 282 divided by 281. It's absolutely nothing, guys. There's no difference. It's a margin of error. So, the increase, you could say, is 281.5 divided by 271.5. So, it's a fair 3% 3, 3 more or less increase. Um, now, look at Breakpoint. Uh, Breakpoint's a bit more modern, so maybe a bit more applicable. This game's a bit dated, but I do love it. But... Uh, 
breakpoint is something that you might still play. Um, 292 divided by 281, 4% more or less if you uh, give it the 4% here. Um, nothing really to write home about, right? There's nothing really interesting. Only ones that interest us really are these are these two. And then I guess Far Cry, you could say. Um, I mean, look, Far Cry, you would never disable equals. You would never do it. Never do it, right? But now, let's say you wanted to, you know, compare Raptor Lake to Alder Lake. You would go 244 divided by 231, and that's 5%. So, people getting 50%, like I've seen on YouTube, uh, yeah, something is going on there. I don't know what's going on, but, yeah, because, I mean, like I said, Far Cry, there's no DLSS. We did not use FSR, so everything is completely bog standard 1080p low settings. Minimal FOV, everything, nothing turned on, nothing, you know, making the testing weird. Absolutely no idea how to explain people getting 50%. This is not even close. And I'm not going to say I'm mad, because it would be immature for me to say that, oh, I am so angry now that I spent a grand, and I was expecting 50%, and now I'm seeing it's not that, now I'm upset. No, that's not how it works. Um, you buy what you buy, you test it yourself, and you see what you get. If you don't get what you thought you were going to get, that, that is what it is. That's how the cookie crumbles. That's how life is. And, uh, you know, it would have been cool. It would have been really interesting if Far Cry saw a big uplift. It would have been really cool. But 5% is what you're getting. So, it is what it is, right? And how much of the 5%, like I said, with all these minimal 4%, 5% margins, how much of that is just the IMC increases? Like, the IMC improvements? Because how much of that is just 200 mega transfers and 2 ticks of cash? Because let's be honest, it could be. It could be some of that. Like, it could be some of it, right? So, interesting. Um, Valhalla's absolute GPU bound. There's nothing to, to, to gain here. There's nothing to talk about. There's no... Well, there's one frame of year for you, but there's nothing. Forget about this game. This game is not... I guess because this is the dud game. This is like the game where testing was a waste of time. Right. Um, Watch Dogs Legion. Uh, again, a game you would not disable equals in. So, for... Um, it seems especially for Ubisoft games... So, Breakpoint, Valhalla, Legion, Far Cry. Now, think about this. When Alderlec launched, there was a problem with Ubisoft games where they could not kind of utilize the equals. They could not even open the game sometimes. I'm wondering if Ubisoft's teams, because they're like different teams like Montreal and different like subdivisions of Ubisoft. I'm wondering if they didn't go back and like optimize their engine for the equals and then... That's why, because I'm noticing, like, these games, these Ubisoft titles, I mean, Wildlands too, but Wildlands was older, but I mean, I mean, I guess, so I guess it couldn't even be the, it couldn't even be the, the optimization, you know, after the fact, it could just be the game's engines, but like, Ubisoft games seem to not like the equals being off, like, Ubisoft games really do not prefer equals disabled, like, it just does not work out well, in any of these games, like, and under no circumstance would you ever look at these Ubisoft game numbers and deduce like, oh, turn the equals off. Never. Never. So, interesting. Very interesting. So, Legion's best result with the equals on, obviously, and then Legion's worst, best result for the i9. Equals on as well. 208. And that is a cool 6%. So, there you go. Between 3% and... 13%. In the best case scenario, it was uh, Forza Horizon 5 equals on versus equals on. And again, like I said, you could turn the equals off and you could get 6%, 6% there. So there, there's, there really is, honestly, under ideal circumstances, 3 And why I say that is because, yeah, you could argue, hey, Dane, but 348 divided by 307 is, yeah, 13%. Yeah, Dane, that's massive, whatever. Intel could come here and be like, oh, that's 13%. If you tested it, right, and you realize that this chip runs better in these two games with equals not on, logically speaking, you would go to BIOS, load your equal disabled profile, that has the higher ring frequency. Come back to the, to Windows. Because it takes like 5 seconds these days on NVMe. Play the game. And then if you want to go play a Valhalla. Or go play a Legion. Or go play a Far Cry. I mean Valhalla doesn't matter. But if you want to go play a, a, a Legion or a Far Cry. Or um, whatever. 
or a breakpoint here in this case, you would, I mean, well, that's not, you know, because the i7 board, whatever, okay. So, okay, let's say you're on the i9. If you wanted to play a Forza Horizon 5 or a Shadow, you would go disable equals in the BIOS. If you want to come back to, to Windows and play some Far Cry, play some Legion, you would go enable the profile again, or, or enable the um, equal profile again. So, yeah, like, if you used Logic, you would use the best scenario for the game you're playing, right? And in that in that vein, it would not be a fair thing to compare, um, you know, almost like you're being oblivious. It wouldn't make sense, because we're not, we're not idiots. So, 348 divided 328, like I said, it's, it's like 6%. So, you know, it sucks, but yeah, that's what you're getting. Um, at best, about 7%. I, I don't know what game it was again, but there was a game here that did 7%. But yeah, that's what you're getting at best. I think it was actually... It might have been Wildlands, I don't know. Yeah. So, that's the deduction. I actually want to get you the number, just so I'm, I'm certain of it. Is it 282 divided by 270? That's 4% only. Breakpoint 292 divided by 281... Three four percent. Um, that's six percent. Three forty two divided by three twenty eight. Four percent. Two forty four divided by. I mean. Five percent still. Yeah, the, really. Yeah, it's it's nothing. There's no there's no real benefits. I mean. Six percent. Yeah, yeah. It's three to six percent, guys. It's that's it. That's all you're getting. Um. I'm not disappointed. I'm just like. It's kind of underwhelming, isn't it? Like, expecting much more. But yeah, 3 to 6% what you're getting. So, that's that. Um, all the videos that I uh, tested in, the long the long takes will be linked in this video description for obvious reasons. And yeah, if you want to argue about the testing parameters, whatever, I I mean, you're welcome to, but I, I just don't really see um, a way to kind of, you know, testing was done in front of you. So, uh, that is what it is. Um, bios profiles were loaded in front of you everyone saw the settings it's it's all there it's all there in a in plain in plain colors so yeah um interesting results but not fully not fully exciting like not totally exciting results uh but the, the uplift is better in synthetics it's not as big in gaming um yeah and that's about it guys hope you enjoyed this video and if you're curious about the the testing you can go watch those videos too uh, but yeah, that's all we have, really. That's all there is, there is to talk about. Uh, interesting. So, have a good day, guys, and I'll check you in the next video.